about clones, about clones, about clones. My God. Hey everybody, Deathbed here with another Chinese fantasy novel FAQ. Today I am talking about clones. Similar to the video I did about cultivation, what I'm going to do is introduce the concept for anybody who doesn't read a lot of Chinese fantasy novels. And then I'm going to go into some detail about the Chinese characters and what they mean. And I think a lot of you are going to find that pretty interesting, even if you have read a lot of Chinese fantasy novels and kind of know how the clones work in general. If you want to skip the first part, I'll put a link in the one of the comments or in the description or something jumping ahead to the, to the part where I get into the complicated stuff. Before I get started, I would like to point out that I would really appreciate the support for the channel. Please do like and subscribe. I also started up my Patreon again. I would really like to kind of monetize the channel a little bit and maybe improve the quality of the videos and help uh, my wife, Madam Deathbite, who's my editor, help her to be able to edit the videos a little bit faster and whatnot. So if you like the content, please do consider uh, going to Patreon to support me. I'll put a link in the description and there's other ways that you can support me in the description as well. Okay, let's get started on clones. Now, clones in Chinese fantasy novels, I mean, the word is kind of, describes what they are. They are a copy of another person. Usually people by means of some sort of magical technique or sometimes an object, device, or weapon will be able to copy themselves. Now, the way that specific authors handle it can vary from, you know, obviously from author to author and even from novel to novel by the same author. And usually the authors will provide some sort of description of their version of how clones work. Usually the clones tend to be less powerful or of a lower level than the person who created them, but not always. Sometimes they can be stronger than the person who created them. For instance, in my current project, Sage Monarch, the character does have a clone who actually starts out stronger and more powerful than him, and their actual levels of strength kind of vary throughout the novel as they practice their version of cultivation differently, because they, they practice different kinds of cultivation. Sometimes the character will have one clone, sometimes many clones, like in uh, Naruto, they'll all have a whole bunch of them that can all fight at the same time. Sometimes the clones are like kind of illusory or like little more than a projection or like a hologram sort of. Sometimes they're flesh and blood and they can sometimes take on their own personality. Sometimes they have no personality. So really it just depends on how the author wants to use it. And okay, so now I'm gonna get into a little bit of the details about what it is in Chinese. The first thing I wanna mention is, I'm gonna pull up a bunch of def definitions like I usually do. The term most commonly translated as clone, as you can see right here, is kelong, which is basically a transliteration. So that's the term you'll see in science, and that is literally the most proper way uh, to translate it into Chinese. The words that are used in Chinese fantasy novels are actually a little bit different. There's basically two that are the, the most common, and they are fanshan and huashan, and I'm gonna pull up the definitions here. As you can see, Profession. It's actually a relatively common term that can that can be used having nothing to do with the copy of somebody. But right there in the definition, you can see doppelganger. Um, you don't see the word clone anywhere in there. Uh, there is a Buddhist definition that essentially is the way it's used in the novels, where you make a copy of yourself. And the two characters that make up this term, the first one, fun, means to divide, to separate, to split apart. And then shen means the body. And so different authors will explain it in different ways, but I have seen it directly broken down into splitting off a part of oneself, like a part of one's soul, or maybe part of, of the body, and then having it grow into something else. It literally means to split apart the body. The other one is hua shen, and if you look um, at the definitions here, we have incarnation or an embodiment or a personification. And then it, there's also a Buddhist definition, which to some extent is similar to how it's used in the novels. The two characters that make this, the first one is Hua. And Hua means a lot of different things. It's one of the characters that is in Lian Hua, which I talk about in my video about some of the really hard uh, translation terms. It can mean to change, to transform, it can mean to melt, it has a lot of different definitions. The other one, Shun, is also body. So I think the intended definition for the Hua is to change or to transform. And you don't actually necessarily have to translate these as clones. Now I dug, I dug through my old emails and I found this email, which I'll show you right now. This is way back in the day. It's actually only about four years ago, but man, it sure does seem a lot longer than that back when I was first getting started. And as you can see, I met, I sent an email to Ren, the owner of Usha World, and asked him about this exact term. And he was the one that told me that yes, he uses clone. But he also mentioned doppelganger. And so sometimes I will use doppelganger. Sometimes I'll use incarnation, especially for the Huashan, because a lot of times you'll see Huashan not as somebody necessarily copying themselves, but making something out of nothing. So I feel like incarnation is a better choice in that regard. I asked some of the translators on Usha World, we have a translator chat group, 
and um, so some of the translators like Ed Valer, uh, Invader, uh, popped in with some of some input on this and I think some of them will handle it differently than clones sometimes. They'll use avatar, projection, uh, duplicate, copy, shadow. So all of them are possibilities to use for Sunshine or Hwashan. There's a few other terms that come up in regard to clones. For example, there is uh, Shen Wai Hua Shen. This was pointed out by Invader, and I've seen this in my novels as well. So literally that means, so Hua Shen is the one I mentioned before, which is an incarnation, and uh, Shen Wai, Shen means your body, Wai means outside. So Shen Wai Hua Shen basically means an incarnation outside of your body. The way I've seen that used sometimes is more of like a projection of a person as opposed to making a copy of themselves. There's also Fa Shen, Fa can mean a lot of different things. It can mean magic, it can mean technique, it can mean the Dharma, which is, you know, we're getting into religious terms similar to the Tao. Uh, in any case, uh, it's combined with the word for Shem to mean a magical body or a Dharmic projection of the body. There's also Jen Shen. Now, Jen Shen is really common as well. Jen means true or real. And so a lot of times the clone and the real person will be compared with these these two terms, with Fan Shen being the clone and Zhen Shen, Zhen, real, Shen, body, being their true and actual body. For Zhen Shen, I didn't ask the other translators about this, I personally will use true self or true body for that, um, to refer to the original and not the copy. Um, as you may have noticed, almost all of these use Shen, which is referring to the body, and it's actually possible to combine a lot of different characters with Shen to make unique terms that are totally fantasy. I tend to use clone and then add another word to the beginning of it. So for example, let's say they put the character for blood, xue, or is it xie, it's a hard one to determine how to pronounce, with um, shen, and that would be a blood clone. Uh, I've seen um, jian, shen, jian is sword, so it could be a sword clone. Uh, sometimes though, the authors will take fun shen and add another character in front of it, such as like fire, or water to make a fire clone or a water clone. There are a handful of other ways to convey this concept, but these are the most common ones that I see all the time. And so that's about it. This, this term, um, or these terms are actually fairly straightforward and easy to understand once you kind of see them and see how they're used in the novels. So are you somebody who can read Chinese or are you a translator? Do you have uh, additional input? Uh, are you a fan? Do you have a favorite clone from the different novels you've read, or do you have any other observations about clones, please do leave them in the comments. Again, please do like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon. For patrons right now, um, I have some of the patrons can vote on the topics that I will do for future videos, so that's kind of cool. And going forward, I am going to try to think of some other rewards and stuff to link to Patreon, but that's for a future date. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you next time. Godzilla.